Hello and test hello everyone. Welcome to class 12 biology. In this video on chapter 15 biodiversity and conservation, we are going to discuss about patterns of biodiversity and importance of biodiversity. The first one is patterns of biodiversity. In patterns of biodiversity, we are going to discuss about the distribution of plants and animal species on the entire globe or in a given area. Okay. So there are certain patterns observed regarding distribution of life forms on in a given area and the first pattern that is given in our textbook is latitudinal gradients in latitudinal gradients the pattern of distribution of biodiversity is such that species diversity it decreases as we move away from the equator towards the poles so from this particular statement we can see that in at the equatorial region the biodiversity or the species diversity is high as we move away from the equator towards the poles the species diversity it gradually decreases so there are three uh, climatic zones on the earth right this is the global map on this global map we can see three climatic zones so the first climate zone is tropical zone so the tropical zone is the area between these two latitudes tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn the area immediately above and below the tropical zone is called as temperate zone and the area to the far north and area to the far south, they are called as the frigid zones or the polar zones. Now, in the latitudinal gradient, what we observe regarding the distribution of biodiversity is that at the tropical region, in the tropical region, the species diversity is quite high compared to temperate zone and frigid zone. In the frigid zone, the species diversity is least. To elaborate this particular pattern, of distribution of biodiversity examples are given in your textbook so these examples you should remember so the first region given in your textbook is colombia so colombia is a country which is uh, in south america so colombia it is located near to the equator which means it is located within the tropical zone so in this particular country there are about 1400 different species of birds so that is quite a high number and if you move towards the north right uh, towards the temperate zone in the temperate zone we have got new york state which is a state of united states of america which is located to the eastern coast and in the new york uh, state uh, we have about 105 bird species which is quite less compared to colombia and if we move further north to greenland which is in frigid zone or which is in the polar zone there are only 56 bird species right, which is quite less so we can see from this particular example that the species diversity of birds it reduces or it decreases as we move away from the equator towards the poles so this is about the latitudinal gradient and when we talk about india right india a part of india it is located within the tropical zone so therefore india boasts of a very high diversity of bird species that is about 1200 different species of birds are found in india and uh, there is also example given regarding Amazonian rainforest. Amazonian rainforest is located in the tropical zone or the tropical area. So this particular Amazonian rainforest, it is uh, in South America. Over here, you can see this particular region. This entire green region represents the Amazon rain rainforest. So this is the Amazon River and this entire region is Amazonian rainforest. This Amazonian rainforest, it has the greatest biodiversity on earth, which is about 40,000 different species of plants, 3,000 different species of fishes, 1,300 species of birds, 427 species of mammals, 427 species of amphibians, 378 species of reptiles, more than 125,000 species of invertebrates. And over that, scientists, they estimate that there are millions of insects waiting to be found and described in this particular rainforest. So this entire area hasn't been explored yet, right? There are more species yet to be discovered. Okay, so if we talk about an iconic animal in the Amazon rainforest, uh, we can give the example of jaguar. So this looks like a leopard, right? But it's not a leopard, it's a jaguar, it's a big cat. You must have seen some videos on uh, National Geographic TV. Uh, Jaguar hunting a caiman crocodile. Right? So, jaguar is an animal of Amazonian rainforest. You must have heard about uh, 
anaconda, that big snake, and that is also an animal of Amazonian rainforest. So, Amazonian rainforest, it is said to be the, uh, it is said, it is said to have the greatest biodiversity on Earth. Okay, so uh, now you can uh, see that in the tropical region, in this particular tropical region, the biodiversity is quite high. Right. So, except for some. Uh, exceptions right there are certain exception, ex exceptions in the tropical region but most of the tropical regions they have got high biodiversity very great biodiversity now the question given in your textbook is why tropics are said to have higher or greater biodiversity the so answer is presented in the form of three hypotheses so the first hypothesis is that since the tropical region or the tropical zone it hasn't undergone drastic changes in the past like glaciation the, the effect of ice age hasn't been that significant on the tropical area therefore the species which lived in this particular region they got more time to evolve which means they got more time to diversify so therefore the tropical area they have got greater biodiversity so this is the first hypothesis and the second hypothesis is that since the tropical area they have got less seasonal variations right so they have got less seasonal variations therefore the animals they have got uh, better adapted to a particular niche right to survive in a particular habitat so that is the second hypothesis of tropics having greater biodiversity and the third uh, hypothesis is that since the tropical region they get more solar energy which means the tropical regions they have got higher productivity primary productivity which means uh, the tropical region can support more life forms so that explains why tropics have got greater biodiversity so these are the three hypotheses which are presented as possible answers for the reason why tropics have got greater biodiversity so this is regarding the first pattern which is the latitudinal gradient okay of the distribution of biodiversity on earth so the second one is species area relationships this pattern of biodiversity distribution was proposed by alexander von humboldt so this name is important alexander von humboldt was the person who established the relationship between species richness and area explored right how is biodiversity distributed within a particular area so the relationship between species richness and area explored was established by Alexander von Humboldt who observed that within a region species richness increased with increasing explored area but it increased only up to a certain limit right so uh, he uh, he was able to establish this particular equation as a relationship between species richness and area explored in which he wrote s is equal to s is the species richness is equal to c a constant into a area explored to the power z so z is the regression coefficient another constant okay so uh, when he drew this particular equation on a graph Right. He found out that the relationship between species richness and area explored is a rectangular hyperbola. So this blue line is the rectangular hyperbola. So you can see the equation over here. S is equal to C to the power C into A to the power Z. Okay. So uh, he found out that as you explore more and more area, the species richness keeps on increasing. Right. But after a certain limit, after a certain limit, limit in the area explored, right the species richness it stops to grow right it becomes uh, stable so so that the, the shape of the graph becomes a rectangular hyperbola over here so he said that the relationship between species richness and area explored is a rectangular hyperbola now if you take the log of this particular equation right it becomes a straight line earlier it was a rectangular hyperbola now if you take the log of this particular equation if you use log on both the sides you get this particular equation and the line becomes a straight line right and in this one log s is equal to log c plus z log a s is the species richness a is the area explored z is the regression coefficient this particular name is really really important z is the regression coefficient it also represents the slope of the line 
right? And C is the Y intercept. Y intercept means where does this particular red line touches the uh, Y axis? That is called as the Y intercept. Okay, so uh, so the relationship becomes a straight line when you take the log of this particular equation. Now over here, the important value to consider is the regression coefficient, which is the Z or Z, however you pronounce. Okay, so uh, it has been found or it has been observed that if you try to calculate the species richness of a particular taxonomic group within a particular area like a country like a small country or a big country okay so it has been found that the value of regression coefficient is constant for most of the species of different taxonomic taxa different taxonomic groups right so there are examples given plants of britain mollus of certain uh, country right if you try to uh, see the regression coefficient of those organisms you will find that the regression coefficient is between 0.1 to 0.2 so it remains constant now uh, i told you z is the slope of the line right so it has got a constant slope for a for a particular area now if you increase the area to entire continent if you increase the area explored tremendously to the level of entire continent what will happen to the value of z is that the value of z increases to 0.6 to 1.2 that, that is a tremendous increase right and it means if the value of z increases what does it mean it signifies if i draw another line right if the value of z increases what should happen to the slope the slope should also increase if i draw another line the slope it increases right so if the value of z is equal to 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 if this is the line another line if the value of z or the regression coefficient it increases to 0 0.6 the, the slope of the line also increases now what does it signify for a larger area the value of z is larger which means steeper slope what does it signify it signifies that as you explore the area like a continent the species the species richness it increases at a very fast rate at a very fast rate so the species richness is also it also becomes very high for greater explored area like a continent so uh, that is what means by regression coefficient and the value of regression coefficient it plays a significant role okay so uh, normally it remains constant between 0.1 and 0.2 but if you explore a very large area like a continent like europe right and then it becomes point the, the value of z becomes 0.6 if you take just england then it becomes 0.1 to 0.2 if you take entire europe then it becomes 0.6 and the, you can see that the line's slope has increased a lot and the line when the line slope has increased you can clearly see that the species richness it increases a lot as well right so in the entire continent like a europe you will find lots and lots of different species so the biodiversity will be quite large okay so this is about the species area relationship which explains another pattern of biodiversity distribution in a given area okay. next we have importance of species diversity to the ecosystem in another word we mean uh, importance of biodiversity to the ecosystem why is biodiversity important now in your textbook it has been mentioned that there is no definitive answer to that right there is no definitive answer for this particular question why is biodiversity important to the ecosystem now scientists they have observed that or ecologists they have observed that a community with more species a community with great with more biodiversity that community tends to be more stable so communities with more species tends to be more stable so that is the general observation made by ecologists so by stable we, we mean that community it tends to suffer from less variation in productivity uh, it tends to be resistant to disturbances, environmental disturbances, right? Pathological disturbances, anything, right? And it tends to be more resistant to invasive species. Invasive species means species which does not belong to the 
uh, ecosystem it comes from some other environment other ecosystem right so that it is becomes an invasive species so communities with more species or communities with more biodiversity tends to be more stable right so that is a general observation made by ecologists you you will find uh, another name given in your textbook tillman right david tillman he found out that uh, a particular plot plot means an area of a land with more biodiversity it tends to have more productivity right and it tends to be more uh, resistant to changes or less variable okay so uh, that is the general observation right but there is no definitive answer as to why biodiversity is important to ecosystem now in order to explain the importance of biodiversity in order to understand the importance of biodiversity to the functioning of ecosystem a very important a very interesting hypothesis has been proposed by a person called paul ehrlich so this name is important another name paul ehrlich he proposed a hypothesis called rivet popper hypothesis in order to explain the importance of species diversity to the ecosystem in his hypothesis he used the analogy of uh, aeroplane so in his analogy aeroplane represents a functioning ecosystem an aeroplane represents a functioning ecosystem and as you can find in an aeroplane you will find lots and lots of rivets so these are rivets right these screws type of these things which holds the aeroplane together they are the rivets right in his analogy aeroplane represents ecosystem and these rivets which holds the ecosystem together these rivets they represent species right different species now in his hypothesis he have mentioned that if the passengers of an aeroplane keeps on removing rivets one by one right if passengers they remove rivets one by one what will happen slowly right gradually what will happen the structural integrity of the aeroplane will become weak right the so structural integrity of the uh, aeroplane will be affected if passengers they keep on removing uh, rivets one by one just like that if we remove species from the ecosystem one by one if the species goes extinct one by one from the ecosystem the ecosystem will also become weak right the uh, the, fu the functional capacity of the ecosystem will be also affected right so this is the rivet popper hypothesis if you remove one or two it may not matter much but if you remove more and more rivets the structural integrity of the aeroplane will be threatened right and the functioning of the aeroplane or the aeroplane will become extremely unstable so just like that from the ecosystem if you remove more and more species right, the functioning of the ecosystem will be affected the ecosystem will become unstable now there is another facet to this particular hypothesis he also said that if the passengers remove rivets from their seats or from their cabinets it won't affect the functioning of the aeroplane the aeroplane will still fly but if the passengers remove rivets from important or crucial parts of the aeroplane like wings or engine what will happen right even if a passenger removes just one rivet from the engine or just one rivet from an uh, from the wings of the aeroplane the the stability or the functioning of the aeroplane will be uh, drastically affected so just like that if an important species from the ecosystem like a top predator is removed from the ecosystem right that will have a huge effect on the functioning of ecosystem right just by removing one species one important species from the ecosystem the functioning of the entire ecosystem can be uh, threatened right or the entire ecosystem can collapse so this is the this is the essence of rivet popper hypothesis in which paul ehrlich he show, he showed the uh, similarity between the functioning of an aeroplane and functioning of a ecosystem okay so you have to remember this rivet popper hypothesis it is quite interesting you have to ex you have to be able to explain this particular hypothesis in your own words okay so in the next video we will be discussing about loss of biodiversity and what are the causes of the biodiversity losses
So please read about these two topics before you watch the next video. Thank you.